Jedi is a very, very difficult concept or character to translate. And there are many different ways that people have translated it, both Chinese as well as people who are foreigners or translators, and there are entire doctoral theses designed to try to attempt to translate this concept. Now in this video, I wanna share something about what I think is the most essential idea behind the concept of qi, and why sometimes I don't even think we should translate it, but I hope this helps you. Hey, it's Dr. Alex Hine, Chinese medicine doctor and licensed acupuncturist, author of the health book, Master the Day. Now I've included two very important links below this video. The first is for a free guide, four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. If you sign up with your email there below, you will also be notified how to become a patient of mine, either locally or online via telemedicine. Now, even in modern Chinese, you have characters or words like tian qi, which means literally sky or heaven, qi, and it just means weather. You even say things like hu qi, like to breathe out, like exhale, or xi qi. So even in daily, colloquial, everyday life, qi does not necessarily have a very mystical connotation. And the problem is that it's not often translated by different varying people the same way. I mean, I myself have mentors who describe qi as just gas. And I have mentors who think qi is literally the energy of the qi of qigong masters. And there's a lot of disagreement. There often is not a lot of unification on what this fundamental concept is in Chinese medicine. First thing is that the character qi itself, when you break down etymology of it, what it really is is steam coming off rice. So it has this implication of being something that's a little bit more rarefied than the material. Right, like steam and wind, they're real things, but they're not tangible things. And I think that's where you get into trouble, where we try to understand qi as a concept. It often is used to describe things in the body that are real, but maybe not tangible. Maybe it describes physiological processes. Maybe it describes subjective sensations, like an emotion. I can subjectively feel an emotion. I can feel anxious in my stomach. Are there many exams that a physician could give you that could tell you, measure that in some way? I, I'm not sure. It would probably be difficult. Now, another concept here, another character is the character for wind, which is feng. Now, the wind character has this character inside of it, chong, which means like a bug or an insect, and then uh, the radical for illness. And it's interesting because it has bug within illness. So it has this idea, you know, like a very Chinese medicine concept is protecting yourself from wind. You read it in all the classic ancient texts, physicians, the inner classic, they all talk about this. And you hear that, like, don't get affected by the wind, and it sounds very pseudoscientific. It sounds like in the Middle Ages where people were like, the sickness, the sick, cover your face, it's the sickness. And they didn't know where it was coming from, but they knew maybe there was something in the air or... And they were, it was an ancient attempt at describing germs. And one of my mentors best described this and helped me the most when he said that wind is anything that invades the body from the outside. So it makes sense that these ancients would have put a bug in the sickness radical. It's like, almost like literally you could say catching a bug. So they understood this on some level. Whether or not they knew it was due to bacteria and viruses, obviously not. But they, you know, individual physicians observed that things were caught from the outside. Now, one final concept that may help you understand qi is that qi can be understood as the intermediary behind a higher level, what's called shen, or people translate it as spirit, a very rarefied thing, I'll just call it that, and the physical form of the body. Qi being the intermediary between what's immaterial and what is material. Now, I don't know how modern people translate shen. I don't know if people link it to electrochemical processes. I don't know if people link Shen to electromagnetic processes uh, related to the fields coming off of like the heart, for example. I don't know how a modern person would study and analyze that. I'm sure there are treatises on that. I'm not that interested. It's just to illustrate that Qi is a level between what is very immaterial and the physical form, which is very material, like my skin. So what is in between that, right? Maybe you're working a hard day at work and you're getting a little anxious, you're getting stressed out, your boss gave you a new project, and you notice you get a little bit of that lump in your throat, you're feeling a little bit short of breath, you're feeling like anxiety. That, some people would call that a chi level illness, right? It's your mind, just your nervous system just generated this physiological response, but it's not physical, right? You don't have a lump growing on you, you don't have something, you don't have a rash coming off you, 
you just feel a lump in your throat and your breathing has changed, you could consider that the bridge between the consciousness and between the material, a qi level illness. And that's very important in Chinese medicine because you can then predict what will happen as a material illness later. And conventional medicine has no way of treating this in between, which is why the qi concept is very, very, very important in Chinese medicine. Because patients are often, when they are in this middle qi level, they often get misdiagnosed. They are told to go to a shrink. They're often put on antidepressants because this is not easy to treat. What you cannot measure, how can you manage that or treat it, right? But in Chinese medicine, you can. And we have very old treatises talking about what is what level and how to recognize this kind of illness. Now, one final concept, not to confuse you anymore. One great physician described this as qi. He described a panic attack 2,000 years ago, and he said, the patient feels like there's qi rushing up into the chest and the throat, and they feel as if they're going to die. So what is qi there? Is it some mystical energy, or is it describing a physiological process of a panic attack? Maybe it's describing hormones, neurotransmitters, and it's describing the subjective sensation of uh, stuff rushing up. What that stuff is, I don't know. If you know biomedicine well or physiology, you could tell me but they're often describing processes that have an effect, but are not material. So maybe this video left you with more questions. I don't really know what she is. And I think to some people, it's just a concept. And to other people, it's a real thing that a Qigong master could shoot a laser out of his, <laughs> shoot a laser out of their hands at you. I don't know, I've never seen that. So I would love to see it. But Qi as a concept, I've given you a few examples and I hope that helps to spell maybe some of the mysticism behind it and give some concrete examples of what it is. All right guys, so think of chi as an intermediate level between the rarefied, the immaterial, and the very physical, very material. Of course, if you wanna follow up, the link below this video is for a free PDF I put together on four daily rituals that can add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And if you'd like to become a patient of mine as well, either locally or online via telemedicine. If you add your email below, you'll see the info for my clinic and how to contact me. All right, before you go, watch these two related videos right on over here.